Welcome, I'm Lisa Young, guest curator of Counterparts Glass Plus Art Elements, and I'm going to give you a tour today of a selection of the artworks. All of the artworks have been on loan from the artists, collectors, the Mu Museum of Glass collection, and also uh, regional museum collections. There are 37 artists in the exhibition, a total of 23 different art mediums, and 12 countries that are represented by the artists in the exhibition. Let's start with space. Space is the area between and around objects. The space around objects is often called negative space. Negative space is evident with the area between and around this multiple object artwork by Thurden Statums titled Indices del Pacificos. Negative space allows the individuality among the 32 boxes of mixed media. William Ivey's oil painting on canvas titled Blues and Whites is not so obvious when discussing negative space. For me, I see the blue areas of the canvas on the left as depth or an emptiness versus the more apparent structural white rectangles. Spaces between carefully placed pat de verre baskets with gold leaf edges and seed pods in each basket. These negative spaces symbolize the distance traveled on a journey from one basket or life experience to another in Tally Grinchfan's Seeds of Hope. Next is value. Value is the scale from light to dark from a hue or color. The contrast of light and dark emphasizes these three artworks compositions. Brushka Wagen's Dart de Verre portrait titled Betty is a good example of value and how the dark dots of the hat and shadows form Betty's facial features. Eduardo Calderon's black and white film photograph titled Umbrella shows the scale's extreme values from the black area of the umbrella against the white overexposed light of the pond. April Surgent's The Valley is a cameo engraving of a landscape. The engraving processes removes the top glass layer of white revealing the black glass under layer that creates a forested hillside. Form can also be an expression of a 3D object within a 2D artwork. Like Alfredo Arteguin's Triste Frida, a portrait of Frida Kahlo surrounded by forms making up nature's flowers and birds within the oil painting on canvas. Cappy Thompson's technique is vitreous reverse enamel painting on a blown glass vessel. She titles it Blue Sun. Both Ardegin and Thompson use forms in their beautiful paintings harmonizing humans and nature. Shape. Shape can be geometric like squares and circles or organic, free form, or natural shapes. The difference between a shape and a form is that shapes are flat. Chocolate Mint is an artwork by artists Walter Lieberman and Dick Weiss of WD40+. These artists collaborate by individually designing layers of shapes and colors and then exchange the artwork until the vitriograph print is finished. Marta Dingus's Purple People Eater is an upcycled textile of shapes from different fabrics that the artist collects from friends and colleagues. Dingus repurposes and reimagines discarded fabrics into a treasured fashion ensemble. Flasher by Judith Schechter forges her stained glass stories by combining individual glass shapes, each carefully cut and refined to create a completed image. Texture is a surface quality that can be seen and felt. These three artworks, the common theme are still lives. And it's really exciting to come across a still life which is known as, as uh, maybe an, an older subject matter that's been reimagined with contemporary medium by contemporary artists. As we see with uh, Beth Lippman and Ingelina Clinell's 
collaboration that they did during an artist residency at the Museum of Glass in 2010. This is called Memento Group Number 13. It's blown in hot sculpted glass. And Dirk Stack's Soliloquy Number 1 is a ceramic artwork, and actually, Dirk has taken on the reverse approach of a still life, and instead of placing the different objects of the goblet and the fruit and the plate and the foliage on a table and painting a 2D uh, image of it, he has given us a 3D rendering of a still life painting, if you will. Staying with the tradition of still life, we have Rene Richtabas White Citadel gouache on paper painting. And if you look at the, the weaving of the basket, it looks like it could be bumpy and textural, but actually if you're allowed to, to touch the gouache painting, it's very smooth. Henry Hallam's flow is blown and slumped and sandblasted, and the sandblasting is the white frame um, around the center, which is actually uh, he created by uh, a blown cylinder with the dancing dots and the lines, and then he slumped it in order to fit it into the, the white sandblasted frame. And I just love the, the way that the lines from the white frame through the center of the flattened cylinder continue even though one is uh, color and the other is white. The same with the dancing dots. Lino Tagli Pietra's Curacio is also a blown glass object with intense cold working. You could see the line and the movement of the line also, going down the center, there's like U's that you could see, but then also on top is a cold working that kind of swirls around it, giving lots of movement. And then speaking of movement, Gerard Sudakawa's Yukamaki Number no. 18 bronze sculpture definitely gives you the idea of a, of a path of a, of a roller coaster following the curves and the line of of his wonderful sculpture. Also, you might know, uh, also you might recognize Gerard Sudakawa as, uh, as the artist who created the mitt at um, Seattle Mariners ballpark. Our, our last art element is color. We have Harvey Littleton's Witch of Agnesis II it's borium glass of multiple overlays. We have Dominic Levino's untitled small hot worked glass air traps and internal veilings. And you can see the separation of the different colors of glass, the reds and the pinks and the clear glass. And then Moonlight landscape by the sea number eight an acrylic on canvas abstract landscape. And I really admire Michael Daly's abstract landscapes uh, from the first time that I saw them. And you do need to use your imagination, but that's okay because it's all art.